Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Radonda Vought? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the crime, then offer my analysis. Radonda Vaught was a licensed nurse who started working at Vanderbilt University Medical Center in October of 2015. Vanderbilt is the largest hospital in Nashville, Tennessee, and generally well-regarded. At least it was before the story became public. On December 24, 2017, a 75-year-old woman named Charlene Murphy was admitted to Vanderbilt after complaining about a headache and nausea. A scan detected an intracerebral hemorrhage. There was bleeding in her brain. By December 26, Charlene's condition had improved. Physicians intended on discharging her, but they wanted to conduct one last scan of her brain to make sure that everything was okay. In preparation for this scan, Charlene was supposed to be given a benzodiazepine called Versed, which is commonly used in hospital settings to help people relax before a procedure or surgery. Redonda Vaught was responsible for administering the Versed, but instead of doing this, she injected Charlene Murphy with a drug called Vecuronium. This is a powerful, paralyzing medication. The names of both drugs begin with the letters VE, which may have contributed to the confusion. Inexplicably, Redonda left Charlene after injecting her. Charlene was paralyzed and suffocated over the course of 30 minutes. She died in a horrible manner. She was pronounced dead at 1 a.m. on December 27. Redonda admitted to hospital staff that she was responsible for killing Charlene. It was a medication error and not intentional. Two neurologists at Vanderbilt reported Charlene's death to the medical examiner. They failed to mention the part about the paralyzing medication killing her. They claimed that her death was natural, attributing it to bleeding in her brain. The medical examiner just took their word for it. No investigation was conducted. In January of 2018, Vanderbilt officials made efforts to hide the medication error from the government and the public. They did not report the error to agencies as required by law. The hospital, however, did fire Redonda Vaught. In early 2018, the hospital reached an out-of-court settlement with Charlene's family. The terms of that deal required the family to stay quiet about the medication error. In May of 2018, Redonda started working at TriStar Centennial Medical Center in a non-clinical position, which does not require a nursing license. On October 3, 2018, federal health officials received an anonymous tip about the fatal medication error. 20 days later, the Tennessee Department of Health decided not to pursue disciplinary action against Redonda Vaught. She received a letter saying, this matter did not merit further action. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services conducted a surprise inspection at Vanderbilt starting on October 31. They discovered that Charlene Murphy died from a medication error. In late November 2018, the story became public. On February 4, 2019, Redonda was arrested and charged with reckless homicide and gross neglect of an impaired adult. On February 8, Redonda admitted that she made a mistake, but she did not offer details. Twelve days later, she pleaded not guilty to the charges. Her attorney made it clear that Vanderbilt shared some of the blame for Charlene Murphy's death. In light of the criminal charges, the Tennessee Department of Health changed course and decided that it would pursue discipline against Redonda. Even though they were willing to ignore the entire situation when they were first made aware of it, they now declared Redonda a threat to the public. On July 22, 2021, the medical discipline hearing began. This occurred prior to the criminal trial. During the hearing, Redonda accepted responsibility for causing Charlene's death. She did not double-check the medication that she was administering. At the same time, she blamed the procedures at Vanderbilt Redonda and her attorney essentially indicated that Vanderbilt was having a problem that impeded communication 
between the electronic health records, the hospital pharmacy, and the medication cabinets. This required a temporary workaround involving nurses overriding the safeguards on the medication cabinets. After listening to Redonda Vaught's argument, the Board of Nursing revoked her license. They did appear to be sympathetic to her situation, but her errors were simply too extreme to let it go, at least when they knew that the public was now watching. On March 21, 2022, Redonda Vaught went to trial. The jury had two medical professionals on it. One was a nurse. Four days later, Redonda was convicted of criminally negligent homicide and gross neglect of an impaired adult. Both of these charges are felonies. She was acquitted of reckless homicide. At the time making this video, Redonda has not been sentenced yet. She faces eight years in prison. Now moving to my analysis. A number of nurses and nursing associations have expressed their support for Redonda Vaught. They worry that the criminal prosecution of a nurse sets a dangerous precedent. They believe that her conviction will make other nurses hide mistakes in fear of being prosecuted and sent to prison. One argument is that some medication errors are inevitable. These mistakes are better dealt with through other mechanisms outside of the criminal justice system. Other nurses are not convinced that Redonda Vaught's conviction was a bad outcome. They believe that killing a patient with the wrong drug is criminal and cannot be overlooked. They recognize that in any profession, there are substandard professionals who need to be removed from the field. The criminal justice system is one mechanism that can do that. This takes me to the question, was Redon Devaught guilty of criminally negligent homicide? Let's take a look at the definition of this charge in Tennessee. A person is guilty of criminally negligent homicide when they cause the death of someone else after disregarding a significant and unjustifiable risk of which they were aware, and ignoring the risk constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of care. With this in mind, let's take a look at the factors both for and against the idea that Redon Devault was guilty, starting with the inculpatory factors. Vanderbilt's pharmacy medication safety officer testified that the hospital did have technical problems with the medication cabinets, but those problems were resolved weeks before the fatal incident. Redonda admitted that she administered the wrong medication to Charlene Murphy, and it is clear that this caused Charlene's death. Redonda was aware that giving the wrong medication to a patient could kill them. Redonda Vaught made an excessive quantity of mistakes, which resulted in her injecting Charlene with the wrong drug. These numerous mistakes appear to represent a gross deviation from the standard of care. This is not a case involving one or two mistakes. Let's take a look at some of the mistakes that Redonda made leading up to the lethal injection. She removed the wrong drug from the medicine cabinet. She overrode the computer. She did not check with the pharmacy. She did not type in the correct name of the medication into the computer. She disregarded a warning sticker on the medication, which indicated it was a paralyzing agent. She knew that Versed was a liquid, yet the drug that she selected was a powder. She did not scan the medication and Charlene's wristband prior to administering the drug. And she did not monitor Charlene's reaction to the drug. Instead, she left her alone. Now moving to the exculpatory factors, the cover-up by Vanderbilt Hospital is consistent with an environment that could lead to mistakes. It doesn't sound like a culture that promotes safety. That's pretty much it for exculpatory factors. When considering the evidence in this case, do I think that Renanda was guilty of criminally negligent homicide? Yes, I think she was guilty in reality and guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. In addition, if Redonda was guilty of the criminally negligent homicide, she was guilty of the gross neglect of an impaired adult. This charge stemmed from the fact that Redonda did not properly monitor Charlene Murphy after administering the wrong drug. There's no dispute around this issue. Redonda was required to monitor Charlene, and she did not. This case seems fairly straightforward as far as guilt, but some nurses and other medical professionals have argued that this case is not about whether Redonda was guilty or not. Rather, it's about how these types of cases should be exempt from prosecution. Clearly, Redonda was guilty of two felonies, 
but the state should have failed to prosecute her because the medical community could effectively deal with these types of mistakes. There is no need to involve the criminal justice system. I find this to be an interesting position, considering that Vanderbilt covered up the entire situation and did nothing to effectively deal with the mistakes until they were caught. This appears to prove that criminal prosecution is necessary because hospital systems are not going to accept responsibility and do anything to prevent the problems in the future. I understand the position of the nurses who support Redonda. They argue that mistakes are going to happen one way or the other. Being open and honest about those mistakes is the best way to prevent them in the future. They make a good point here. Most mistakes should not involve the criminal justice system. I don't have a problem with prosecutors being reluctant to charge nurses for honest mistakes, but the Redonda Vaught case is not a good example of a case that should have been ignored by prosecutors. This is not a person who should be supported by thousands of nurses. Redonda's behavior was horrible and inconsistent with the one innocent mistake theory. Many of the nurses who have commented on this case start out by saying they would never make the series of mistakes that Redonda made. I agree with their assertion. The vast majority of nurses would not do this. They don't have anything to worry about as far as criminal prosecution. I can appreciate that prosecuting nurses will make them feel uncomfortable about talking about mistakes, which could be detrimental to health care. Something else that's detrimental to health care is being given the wrong drug and dying as a result. If a nurse can never be prosecuted for a medication error, then people might be afraid to seek medical care. Many patients already believe that they are in mortal danger from hospital food. Now they need to worry about nurses killing them too. What's more, the perpetrator can then just say, oops, I made a mistake, and the matter is dropped. The death will never be investigated or treated as a crime. It's just something that happened because of an error, and there's no accountability. It can be easy to forget the suffering of the victim in a case like this. Charlene Murphy was administered a paralyzing drug and left alone in a room to die a horrible death. After her death, a cover-up was initiated by the hospital, and the person who killed her found another job. This is not justice. Now moving to my final thoughts. No matter what job someone has, there is always a temptation for someone to become lazy and irresponsible, to believe that somehow they are above making mistakes. They can become complacent. If their employer has systemic problems, they may start to believe that they don't have to worry about getting in trouble because if something happened, their employer would be blamed, like they have an excuse, a get-out-of-jail-free card. In reality, Every worker has to be responsible for their own behavior. They have to pay attention and do a good job. Nobody should be allowed to cause another person's death through a series of preventable errors and escape responsibility. Those are my thoughts in the case of Redonda Vaught. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.